Here comes another video which I recorded in May 2016 and uh, it was there for well over a year and then it was blocked worldwide due to a minor copyright infringement. So um, I've re-edited it slightly and here it comes. For well over a year now I've been exchanging emails with a guy who doesn't want me to mention his name publicly. He's a hardcore Young Earth creationist. Unlike many of his brethren, he's reasonably coherent and knowledgeable about some aspects of science, but he can be extremely patronising and arrogant. As a result of our written conversations, I decided to put this response to him in the form of a video. Unlike him, I'd rather have the conversation in a public forum, where those who are more knowledgeable than either of us can critique our arguments. He believes that the Earth is 6,000 years old, and that this is more than enough time for all of the limestone we have today to have formed. Not only that, he claims that most of it formed during Noah's flood, within less than a year, as a result of algal blooms. Please, you know who you are. If you watch this, comment below and tell me if I have misrepresented your position. Even if I have misunderstood what he wrote, I intend to show that the Earth cannot possibly be as young as 6,000 years by using some well understood biological and geological processes to piece together a basic understanding of what is happening in the natural world and how long it takes. So, with a bit of digging, I have acquired some estimates of numbers we can do some back-of-the-envelope calculations with. First of all, a few basic facts about limestone, otherwise known as calcium carbonate. We're all familiar with the softer version. We call it chalk. Most limestone is quite tough, though. The Great Pyramids at Giza in Egypt are made from it and have been there for over four and a half thousand years. Bear in mind that this is three quarters the way back to the beginning of time, according to young earth creationists. When limestone has been compressed and subjected to high temperatures in the earth's crust as a result of tectonic movement, it partially crystallizes, becoming much tougher and is what we recognize as marble. Calcium carbonate is a compound which contains one calcium, one carbon and three oxygen atoms. About 4% of the sedimentary rock in the Earth's crust is limestone. The mass of the carbon in the limestone is about 4 million gigatons. That's 4 million billion tons. That is a staggering amount and is by far the largest carbon reservoir on this planet. It is estimated that between 80 and 90% of limestone comes from the bodies of very small sea creatures in other words, without life, we would have less than a fifth of the limestone we do have today. So how do living organisms transfer calcium, carbon and oxygen from the seawater to sediment which eventually becomes rock? Basically, these tiny creatures consume even tinier creatures called phytoplankton. Phytoplankton are autotrophs, which means that they photosynthesize. They build their bodies in the same way plants do, by using sunlight to help them separate carbon dioxide molecules. They use the carbon to build their bodies and release the oxygen as a waste product, which incidentally is very beneficial for us. So how much carbon can photosynthesizing plants and phytoplankton absorb from the atmosphere and oceans in a year? The figure is about 215 gigatons. And here's the very important detail. An almost identical amount of carbon is released by life, the biosphere, through respiration and decomposition, which means that the net annual uptake in the form of limestone is tiny by comparison. Incidentally, due to the human activity of burning fossil fuels, deforestation and cement production, we're adding an extra 4 gigatons of carbon per year, more than the natural systems can absorb. Hence the fact that the concentration of atmospheric carbon dioxide has risen from 280 to 400 parts per million since the Industrial Revolution. This is having an impact on the natural greenhouse effect. 
human activity is upsetting the natural balance. But if not for that, the short and long-term carbon cycles remain in equilibrium for long periods of time. So the thing which the young earth crowd need to understand is that in order for 85% of 4 million gigatons of carbon to have been transferred from the atmosphere and oceans to limestone rock within 6,000 years, it would require an average of 566 gigatons of carbon per year to be added to the limestone reservoir. This is more than twice the total annual uptake of the biosphere, never mind the net. If the young earth proponents are right about the age of the earth, then the average accumulation of limestone would have to be several orders of magnitude higher than it is observed today. It's not even in the ballpark of reality. And if they then claim that things were different back in Noah's day, it becomes even more absurd, as that figure of 566 gigatons per year would need to increase dramatically to compensate for the negligible net gain observed today. This planet simply cannot contain nearly enough biomass for the limestone we have to have been formed within 6,000 years. What it boils down to is the fact that the Earth is not 6,000 years old. All of these absurd numbers disappear if we accept the scientific conclusion that life and plate tectonics have been doing their thing for some 3.8 and 4.6 billion years respectively. This also explains why below a certain point in deep mines we find unoxidated iron ore. This is how we know that prior to 2.3 billion years ago there was no free oxygen in the atmosphere. I already mentioned that oxygen is a waste product of photosynthesis. Up to that point any free oxygen was chemically captured by dissolved iron, but then, when the oxygen sinks became saturated, free oxygen began to accumulate in the atmosphere. Between then and now, the oxygen level has risen to 20%. During that time, life colonized the land and evolved to make use of that waste product. I keep asking young earth creationists why there is agreement among scientists on the earth being 4.6 billion years old and life appearing 3.8 billion years ago. Why those numbers? I haven't yet heard a satisfactory answer. If deep time was a fabrication, surely we would find scientists claiming that the earth was a trillion years old, or 200,000. But the fact that multiple independent fields of research produce results which support the conclusion that the Earth really is 4.6 billion years old suggests to me, at least, that those scientists might just be onto something.